News Now Sports. The University of Northwest Ohio raised some eyebrows with their accomplishments last season, sharing their first ever conference title, producing a program best 25 and 8 season, and making their first trip to the NAIA National Championship. With the cornerstones being set, the racers hope to stay on track. It was a historic run last year. The buzz about UNOH basketball was back, or really just beginning, really with Coach Adams and everything they've done here. So to be a part of that was awesome. Though last season was historical, the UNOH racers are putting last year in the past. We definitely, I mean, put it behind us and we tried to do better this year. I mean, we had, in the beginning of the season, our uh, goals were a little higher this year. But right now, we're looking at just making nationals again. Posting a 19-3 and record in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference was the best UNOH has seen in its nine-year tenure. But getting back to those numbers will be tough. Early in the season, we missed those graduating seniors, and so we, were, we, looked, we weren't hitting on all cylinders, and, and, uh, and, and we struggled offensively a little bit. However, not all is lost to graduation. The racers do return Lawrence Jackson, their All-American and leading scorer from last year. But the injury bug has bit three starters, including Jackson. We had high expectations coming into the season, John, and, and, and one of the things we've been fighting this year is, is the injury bug, and uh, we have not started the same lineup uh, in almost any one of our games due to their injuries. So it's been a tough start to a year, and uh, our attitude right now is just to keep working hard and get better at doing what we do. And that improvement will have to be seen in January. The month of December has not been too kind to UNOH, dropping their last five games, but the racers look to straighten themselves out in the new year. We we'll leave 2015 behind, you know, beginning of the year, we had a great run last year in 2015, and then we didn't close exactly how we wanted to, but 2016 is a new year, so we'll see what we can do about it. More from the hardwood, the Holy War takes place this Sunday. Lima Central Catholic hosts Delphi St. John's in their historic rivalry. However, the Thunderbirds and Blue Jays set aside their differences and came together to bring out some old school jerseys for this year's matchup. All the way back in 1949, LCC and St. John's dueled in the district tournament. The Blue Jays coming out on top and going on to win the state title. Both teams are, draw are donning the 1940 style to honor their successes from the past. You can see the excitement from the former and current players as well as the coaches heading into this weekend's battle. I like that it uh, kind of brings the whole community together. It kind of lets all the people that come being able to look into the past and see how everyone wore these uniforms and see how they played on weekends like that. I never had any problem getting up for a game against Delphus. That was a priority. I think they're really excited about it. You know, I think, you know, change or something, doing something a little bit different. Um, to create some new type of energy, uh, you know, as we enter the month of January. Our, our guys are looking forward to it, and I'm sure LCC is as well. We're all pretty excited. It feels like an achievement, kind of. I mean, like I said, no one's ever done it before, and it just feels really good. We need to take a break here on Your News Now Sports, but when we come back, highlights from the Orange Bowl and Peach Bowl, plus we'll check in at the Cotton Bowl after this quick timeout. Welcome back. Tomorrow is the big day for Ohio State and Notre Dame fans. The Fiesta Bowl will be underway in less than 24 hours. To no surprise, Joey Bosa confirmed he is going to the NFL, foregoing his senior season. With Cardell Jones and Ezekiel Elliott also reaffirming their decisions, one might be nervous that the players' minds are on their futures instead of the present. But head coach Urban Meyer dismissed all of that and assured everyone that his athletes are professionals. What do pros do? Pros attack the task at hand, and the task at hand is to represent the Ohio State University against Notre Dame in one of the best bowl games in the country. Yeah, they've got very good players. There's no question about it, but they have more than that, and that's been instilled in them. Um, so, you know, that's the biggest challenge. We think we've got some of that as well, and we're going to need that tomorrow. To the Georgia Dome, Florida State making their fourth Peach Bowl appearance. Houston, on the other hand, making their first. Former Ohio State offensive coordinator Tom Herman showing his prowess. DeMarcus Ayers on the reverse pass, airing one to a wide open chance. Allen, Cougars go up 14-3. Into the fourth, Florida State trailing 24-10. Sean McGuire has a wide open man downfield. He fires and connects with Travis Rudolph. Seminoles draw closer 24-17. No one touching him as he enters the end zone. But Ryan Jackson, he would seal the deal. His two-yard rush making it 38-24. Houston wins the Peach Bowl. Off to Southern Florida, the first semifinal for the college football playoff. Starting in the first quarter, Oklahoma getting on the scoreboard first. Samaje Pirine with the two-yard rush. Sooners lead 7-0. to zero. 
into the second. Clemson facing a fourth and four. They call a good old fashioned punt fake. Andy Teasdale with a beautiful pass to Christian Wilkins for 31 yards and a fresh set of downs. If only he could have stayed in bounds. But two plays later, the Tigers strike Deshaun Watson, scrambling and working his way into the end zone. Clemson back on top, 10 to seven. Late in the same quarter, Baker Mayfield finding Mark Andrews in the flat. He puts on the brakes, then back on the accelerator. Sooners lead 17-16 at the break. A close first half, but the second half got ugly for the Sooners. Wayne Gallman in from one yard out. And in the fourth, it's Goldman again with the cherry on top. Clemson shutting out Oklahoma in the second half. Tigers win 37 to 17, and they will face the winner of the Michigan State and Alabama game for the national championship. Currently 38 to 0, Alabama late in the fourth. Okay, thanks, John. We'll be right back with stocks.